This is a book that I found at an antique store, and the story is from 1957, and this is a 1968 printing, and so I just thought some people who like antique things might enjoy seeing this, and people who like mice, like me, and I have a little stuffed mouse here. This isn't from an antique store, but I just thought that it was really cute. I recently bought that, and this book is in pretty good condition. I did put some tape on it because the spine was a bit worn. The illustrations are really adorable and looks like a child's writing there. It was a looks like it was a gift to Becky from Heather in July 1969. Pages are a bit yellowed. Here we have the copyright, 1957, by Rumor Gordon, and this is the 1968 edition, and it's printed in the USA. For Mary Groves, because House Mouse belonged to her. Once upon a time, there was a little mouse house. It was like a doll's house, but not for dolls, for mice. Its walls were painted red, with lines for bricks. Its roof was gray, with painted tiles and a red chimney. The roof lifted up, and in the house was a hall with a front door, a sitting room, and a bedroom, each with a window. The wallpaper had a pattern of spots as small as pinheads, and the carpets were pink flannel. In the hall was a doormat cut from two inches of tweed. The sitting room had a painted fireplace, two chairs, and a table. In the bedroom was a tiny looking glass and a bed bedclothes and a blue and white quilt. Out the window were muslin curtains, and on each sill stood thimble-sized pots of geraniums. The geraniums were made of scarlet silk. On tin tack pegs, on the wall hung some dusters no bigger than postage stamps. Over the front door was a notice that said, Mouse House. Mouse House was given to a girl called Mary as an Easter present. It's to keep your jewelry in, said her father, but Mary shook her head. It's meant for mice, said Mary, and indeed there were two mice there already, a he-mouse in the sitting room and a she-mouse in the bedroom. They wore clothes. He Mouse had a suit with a pale blue ribbon tie. She Mouse wore a dress with a pale blue apron. They stood on their hind legs and their fur looked just like flannel. Their whiskers looked like bristles and their eyes were still as beads. Are you proper mice? asked Mary. There was no answer, not so much as a squeak. He Mouse and She Mouse stayed quite still, quite, quite still. Mary was disappointed. I thought mice ran, she said. Most mice do. They scamper up and down the stairs and come into the larder and the cupboards and climb the table legs. They whisk into holes and run behind the wainscoting. The sound of their running can make a rustle and patter like rain, and they go so fast you can hardly believe you have seen them. That is how most mice run, but not he-mouse and she-mouse. Mary waited for them to move. Even a tail or a whisker, said Mary. Sometimes she lifted up the roof. She lifted the roof up quietly to take a sudden peep, but they were always standing where she had left them, still, quite, quite still. At last she took Mouse House upstairs and put it away on her chest of drawers. Don't you want to play with it? asked her mother. Mice can't play, said Mary, but she was wrong. Far down below stairs in Mary's house was a cellar where rubbish was kept, and there behind an old broom in the corner was another mouse house. It was not elegant like the one upstairs. It was a broken flower pot made comfortable with hay. I cannot tell you how many mice lived in it because I was never quick enough to catch them, but it was brimful of mice. The overcrowding in houses is a terrible problem, Mary's father said as he read the newspaper. The mice in the flower pot could have told him that. 
When they were all in it asleep, there were always some whiskers or a tail hanging out, an ear, a paw, or a little mouse leg. There was not an eighth of an inch to spare. If you want to know how small that is, look on a school ruler. And the youngest, a little girl mouse, called Bonnie, ended up most nights pushed out on the cellar floor. She will catch cold, said Mother Mouse. It's bad to lie out on the stone. Father Mouse folded the children. Naughty, bad mice, he said. They can't help it, said Mother Mouse. There are too many of them. Then he scolded her. You shouldn't have had so many. There's little Bonnie Mouse. She's the tiny one. But they were beautiful children. Their fur was soft and brown, not at all like flannel. Their ears and tails were apple blossom pink, and their whiskers were fine, not like bristles. Their eyes were black and busy, not still like bees. And all those mouse children darted and scampered and played. Those illustrations are so adorable. Mary would not have believed her eyes if she had seen them. Even when they were asleep, they scrabbled and twitched as if they were running in their dreams. But I wish they wouldn't, said Bonnie. Couldn't we move to a larger house, she asked. Couldn't we find one? Couldn't we look, asked Bonnie. But there was no time with such a big family to feed. Father and Mother Mouse were gathering crumbs and bits of cheese and scraps of this and that from morning to night. Hachu, sneaked Bonnie. What games did the mice children play? Much the same as you. Catch as catch can and puss in the corner, though puss was really frightening to them. They played I'm on Tomcat's ground picking up gold and silver and blind mouse bluff, blind mouse buff, and hide and seek. Mary would have been surprised. An empty matchbox made them a card, and for balls they had some dried peas. Come and play, Bonnie, cried her brothers and sisters, but Bonnie had caught a cold and did not want to play. Two tears as small as dewdrops ran down her whiskers. Mice did not have handkerchiefs so that she could not wipe them away. There's little Bonnie again. That night, she found herself out on the floor again. Mammy, Mammy, squeaked Bonnie, but Mother Mouse was asleep, worn out with searching for crumbs and cheese. Mammy, Mammy, the cellar was cold and dark. From inside the flower pot came soft snufflings and squealing, the sound of little mice happily asleep. Bonnie tried to get back, but she could not push in more than the tip of her nose. Where can I go, squeaked Bonnie. She wrapped herself around in her tail and curled up on the cellar floor, but it was too cold to sleep. She tried once more to push back into the flower pot, but one of her brothers, dreaming of the cat, kicked her hard in the eye with his paw. Ouch, squeaked Bonnie, but no mouse heard. Nobody wants me, said poor Bonnie, and began to creep away. Where can I go, she asked. There was no mouse to tell her. She crept across the floor until she came to a flight of steps. Shall I go up them? She asked Bonnie. There seemed nowhere else to go. At the top, she rubbed her whiskers. She thought a strange light shining. Is it? Asked Bonnie, straining her whiskers to look. The light was shining at the end of a long passage. It came from under the crack of a door. A mouse can wriggle under a crack. Bonnie crept down the passage and under the crack and found herself in the hall. The hall was filled with clear silver light. Bonnie blinked. She had not seen moonlight before. It was very pretty, but very strange. It turned her into a silver mouse, and that made her feel dizzy. She crept out on the rug. She had never been here before, only behind the wainscot, and her whiskers trembled as she looked this way and that. There's little Bonnie. 
Grandfather clock in the corner went tick, or no, talk, 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 talk. And Bonnie's heart, which was not much bigger than a watch, went tick, 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 far more quickly. Then it almost stopped. The cat was asleep on the chair. Bonnie had only heard about the cat. She had never seen him, but she knew at once what he was. Whisk, I wish I could describe to you how quickly she was gone up the stairs. Oh, how her legs ached and her breath hurt. It was like climbing a mountain far too fast. He's coming, he's coming, squeaked Bonnie. The cat had not moved an eyelid, but Bonnie was half dead with fright when she reached the top landing. A hole, I need a hole, she squeaked. There was no time to look for one, as she, and she wriggled under the crack of the nearest door. It was the door of Mary's room. I need somewhere high and safe, another mountain, and Bonnie ran up the highest thing she could see. It was a chest of drawers. Oh, my poor heart, cried Bonnie. It was going tick, 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 faster than you can say it. Then, there in front of her, she saw Mouse House. It's a hole, it's a house, cried Bonnie. The front door was open and she flicked inside. For a long time she lay in the hall. Then when she was sure she was really safe, she sniffed the doormat with her whiskers. She looked into the sitting room. He Mouse was there. Hello, said Bonnie. There was no answer. She touched he mouse with her whiskers, which is the way which is the mouse way of shaking hands, but he did not touch her back. It looks like a mouse, but it does not feel like a mouse, nor smell like a mouse, said Bonnie. She went into the bedroom. She mouse was there. Hello, said Bonnie. There was no answer. Bonnie touched she mouse with her whiskers, but she mouse did not touch her back. It looks like a mouse, but it does not feel like a mouse. Nor smell like a mouse, said Bonnie. Can't you hear me? Bonnie asked. She mouse did not say yes, and she did not say no. She said nothing at all. Pay attention, said Bonnie, and flipped she mouse with her tail. She mouse fell flat on, on her back on the floor. Bonnie went back into the sitting room where he mouse had not moved. You had better lie down too, said Bonnie, and she flipped him with her tail. He mouse fell flat on his back on the floor. That made Bonnie remember how much she wanted to lie down herself, not stiff and straight as they did, but curled up soft and warm. Ah, oh, she gave a yawn. She tried to lie on the chairs, but they were too small. The table was too hard. She went into the bedroom and looked at herself in the glass, and the mouse in the glass gave a yawn too. Poor little mouse, how sleepy you are, said Bonnie. Then she turned and saw a bed. She had not seen a bed before, but she knew at once what it was for. Whisk, up she jumped and wriggled under the quilt. It is true that she put her tail on the pillow, but a very young mouse cannot be expected to know everything. The bed was soft, the quilt was warm, in a minute Bonnie was fast asleep. She was so tired that she slept a long, long time. When she woke up in the morning, someone had shut the front door. Have you ever been shut in? Then you will know how it feels. Bonnie ran around. Bonnie ran round from room to room, round and round and round. She pressed her face against the windows until her whiskers hurt. She bruised her paws and beating on the door. The tables and chairs, the bed and the geraniums were all knocked over. The looking glass came off the wall and the dusters were twitched off their pegs. The wallpaper was scratched off and the carpets were torn. Let me out, let me out, squeaked Bonnie, but nobody heard. There was no one to hear. Mary had gone down to breakfast. He mouse and she mouse lay flat on the floor. Bonnie ran over and over them, but they did not protest. Mammy, mammy, squeaked Bonnie, I want to go home. Far down below in the cellar, Mother Mouse was squeaking. Be quiet and let me sleep, said Father Mouse, but she would not let him sleep. 
A mouse child is missing, she squeaked, and she shook him. A mouse child is missing, is missing. How do you know, asked Father Mouse, and he tumbled slowly out of bed. He slept in the bottom of the flower pot and got up last of all. I counted them, said Mother Mouse. You can't count, said Father Mouse. Neither could he, but he did not tell her that. He watched the mouse children hopping and skipping about. They are all here, he said. But Mother Mouse shook her whiskers. There should be one more. She pulled all the hay out of the flower pot. There were some bits of cheese rind, but no mouse child was there. She wept, but Father Mouse quickly ate up the cheese rind. It was his private store. Upstairs, in Mouse House, Bonnie ran round and round. When the flower pot was empty, how dirty and small it looked. How can anyone expect it to bring up children in that, said Mother Mouse. What's the matter with it, asked Father. It's dirty and shabby and broken and small, said Mother Mouse. There's a hole in the bottom. A little mouse could fall straight through it, or be cut on the jagged edges, or fall out on the cellar floor. You must find me another house at once, said Mother Mouse. What, me, said Father Mouse? I'm eating. And I'm sorry to say that with his mouth full, he said, The health is for the children. Let the children look. The mouse children were delighted. A new house? We'll find one, they cried, and ran squeaking all over the cellar floor. They found an old coal scuttle, but it was full of soot. We should be black mice, said Mother Mouse. They found a flower bin with a hole in it. But all the flower had not run out. We should be white mice, said Mother Mouse. A riding boat looked cozy, but what a long, long passage, said Mother Mouse. And it's dark. It needs a window at the other end. There was no more room in the kettle than in the flower pot, and a dustpan was not the right shape. It's too difficult to find a house, said the mouse children. They lay down in the hay and went to sleep. Father Mouse slept, too, but Mother Mouse sat up. She wanted a new home, and she was missing her baby. Every now and again, a mouse tear slid to the end of her whiskers. And upstairs in Mouse House, poor Bonnie ran round and round. Let me out, let me out, she squeaked. Every morning after breakfast, Mary made her bed. This morning, when she came into the room, she heard a queer noise. It was rustlings and scratchings and thumps and squeaks. It seemed to come from Mouse House. Mary listened, squeaks and thumps and scratchings and rustlings, and it did come from Mouse House. My mice are playing, cried Mary. She ran to lift up the roof and look, and nearly dropped it. Quick as a flash, with a flip and a thud, Bonnie had jumped out. Whisk, she ran down the chest of drawers and out through the bedroom door. All Mary saw was a flash of whisker and tail. They've gone, cried Mary. But when she turned over the mess in Mouse House, He Mouse and She Mouse were flat on the floor. Then there was another mouse, asked Mary. What a sight Mouse House was now. The curtains were down. The paper was in ribbons. There's little Bonnie. I just love the illustrations in this. But the mice are so cute. And the carpets were ripped. Chairs and bedclothes, geraniums and dusters were all mixed up. The legs had come off the table. The quilt was torn to bits. It's all spoiled, said Mary. There was nothing to do with Mouse House but to put it down in the cellar. Bonnie took a long time to reach home. She ran into a hole in the wainscot on the landing and lost her way. All day she trotted up and down those wainscot passages. Once she came out into the hall and met the cat. Then she got into the bathroom where a lady was washing in the basin. A mouse, a mouse, screamed the lady and threw a sponge. The sponge landed on the floor by Bonnie and made her soaking wet. It was not until late that evening that a tired, cold, Dirty, draggled little mouse put her whiskers out of another hole and found she was in the cellar. She was just going to run to the flower pot when what did she see? 
She shook her whiskers once, twice, three times before she could believe her eyes. The flower pot was gone, and where it had stood under the old broom was Mouse House. But what a different Mouse House. It was full of scufflings and squeakings out of every window, and even up the chimney peeped the little mice. Father Mouse was in the hall, and on the doorstep Mother Mouse was looking this way and that. Mammy, Mammy, squeaked Bonnie. I knew there was one more, said Mother Mouse. For the mice, Mouse House was not spoiled at all. They found it far more convenient without curtains and a table and chairs. They use one room for sleeping in, the other as a pantry. That's better, said Mother Mouse. It is better not to have cheese rind in the beds. Father Mouse hid a little under the doormat in the hall. The scraps of wallpaper and carpet and bedclothes made a comfortable nest. The girl mice wrapped each of the geraniums in a duster and used them for dolls. What happened to he mouse and she mouse? Mary had lifted them out of the house at once, but they did not seem to notice when it was taken away or that he mouse's tie was off and she mouse's apron torn. And it wasn't you playing, said Mary. She tidied them up and sewed them on a pincushion and gave it to her aunt for Christmas. The mice are very happy, particularly Bonnie. She was a little nervous at first of being shut into Mouse House, but the door soon came off its hinges with the mouse traffic going in and out. When her brothers and sisters heard her story, they voted she should sleep in the bed, so that she can never be pushed out again, said Mother Mouse. But if I hadn't been pushed out, said wise little Bonnie, we shouldn't have Mouse House. It's so cute. Bonnie in her bed, finally. How do I know all this? Well, one day, not a long time after, Mary hid in the cellar when she played hide-and-seek. As she sat there, quite quiet, the mice children came hopping out, hopping and skipping and scampering and jumping. Then mice do play, said Mary. After that, she would often steal down and watch, steal down to watch and listen and look. They are my mice, said Mary. I gave them Mouse House. Then she stopped and thought, or did one little mouse come and fetch it? When she thought that, I think she could guess the rest, and that is how she came to tell me, and I to tell you, the story of Mouse House. Let's see how many are there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. the end. I hope you enjoyed hearing that story. I was excited to find it because of the illustrations. I think they're so adorable and um, pretty realistic as far as the shape and the way mice look and also the behavior of mice. The author really captured how mice behave and so I wonder if the author had pet mice. So thank you for watching.